Well, we just heard your victory at the 12 Hours of Sebring. Congratulations on that, my friend. Yeah, thank you very much. You have uh, spent an off year running exclusively, with the exception of a few one-offs for A.J. Foyt, uh, the IMSA WeatherTech Series, and in sports car racing. What possessed you to get back into uh, IndyCar full-time with A.J.? Uh, well, that that was uh, always the, the the plan, you know, to try and get back a uh, full time IndyCar. Obviously, uh, I wasn't quite ready to put an end to my IndyCar career, and it just uh, it got a little messy at the end of nineteen, and wasn't quite sure it was going to be available and possible for me. Uh, but eventually, uh, um, actually, pretty soon after, I uh, got to talk to Larry, and uh, you know, they were pretty excited that I was uh, I was uh, wanting to to be a part of the program, and um, you know things were already fairly committed so we could only do a partial program uh, which got even more partial <laughs> because mm -hmm. of um, but also teed us up pretty well for for 2021 uh, kind of transitioning with the last few races of 20 uh, into the 21 season uh, working extensively on simulator work and and uh, with the engineers and everybody uh, on board uh, trying to do the best we can for for this upcoming season so uh yeah, I mean, IndyCar is my passion. That's where my uh, my heart lays. And uh, I got kind of a double passion because I very much enjoy uh, sports car racing. But uh, yeah, uh, for as long as I can be competitive and, and race in IndyCar, that's where I want to be. So what are the differences between wheeling a sports car, high horsepower, and a high horsepower, lots of downforce IndyCar? Uh, a couple seconds. Uh, mm -hmm. It's, it's not dramatic, uh, but obviously the, the, the sports car stuff is heavier, uh, a, a bit less horsepower and a bit less downforce. So you just take the whole thing and, and, and make it a little slower. And that's, that's how it compares. Uh, but yeah, for sure in, in North America, there, there is nothing that goes faster than, a, than an Indy car. And uh, it's, it's uh, just a really fun car to drive. When I spoke to you for our preseason uh, brick by brick special for the NTT Indy car series, um, you really went into a lot of detail and seemed genuinely excited about the gains that AJ and Larry have made with Foyt Racing in the off season. Yeah, I think so. I mean, like like we talked about the, um, the um, you know we finished the season on a high with with St. Pete finishing fourth, showing some pace, uh, missing out the the last six by nothing, a couple <laughs> hundreds. Um, and uh, and yeah, we've, we've worked very hard. The teams work very hard. The atmosphere is good. But a couple of very good tests, including the the last one at Barber, were very competitive. And uh, and yeah, we're we're you know we're we're trying to prepare the best we can. We've had the, the arrival of Justin Taylor on top of the existing structure of engineers. And uh, yeah, every everybody's head down and and very focused and uh, and excited about 2021. So. Uh, We'll see. We'll see how good we get it. But uh, I like the vibe and and the fact that everybody's worked hard. And I don't. I don't think we feel like we're left anything undone. You know, and and mm -hmm. that, that that's a feel good moment. And uh, and hopefully all that hard work gets rewarded. Your input, according to Larry Foyt, was invaluable, not only in the immediacy of the end of the season, Seb, but also in setting in motion in his mind what some of the missing parts were to Foyt racing. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, obviously I can't, I can't talk, uh, you know, for, for anybody. Uh, but um, like I said, I mean, I, I really like the, the synergies and, and mm. yet yeah, within the team, I think they were looking for a little bit of guidance on, on a couple of items, especially on the damping side of things uh, that they, they tried a lot of things and, and maybe, uh, tried a little too hard on, on a couple of components and, and things that look really good on the shaker and, and, you know, not, didn't necessarily correlate with the track. And, and so we, we got, felt probably a little bit victim of that, uh, in, uh, in the Indy GP and, and, and didn't really optimize a couple of things during St. Pete Grand Prix. Uh, but having able to be, uh, working the whole winter with the team doing some correlation work on the, on the simulator and, and then work, working on the shaker very extensively, we I think we, we could definitely cross some numbers and, and understand why some things look good but didn't feel good in the track and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, with, with all those inerters and, and stuff that are in the dampers, 
uh, it gets very complicated very quickly in IndyCar, and and you got to be very careful at at not just trusting numbers, but also uh, you know trying to understand why it is that it feels good or doesn't, and makes lap time or doesn't. And uh, I think if if anything, that's probably the one kind of place where um, we we may have done the, the most uh, progress and and understanding. And uh, yeah, hopefully, yeah. Uh, hopefully, like I said, hopefully it pays off. All right, put your put your engineering hat on. And let's uh, provide for our listeners uh, dampers for dummies. Can you put it in layman's perspective or can you help a non-educated fan that knows nothing about dampers? uh, What on his car that may be akin to? Uh, So, yeah, I mean, it's very complex to to put it uh, (laughs) uh, in in dummies perspective. Oh, come on. I know you can do this. But uh, I mean, bottom line, you know, you have the regular shocks that have been developed through uh, you know, many years now. You have basically shim dampers and and uh, which are the Penske's and then valve dampers, which are the uh, Olin's. Uh, for the most part, there are other manufacturers, but those are the two that uh, get used the most and that we use. Uh, then you also have some people that make their own dampers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but uh, that's that's an all all the different level of complexity that you throw yourself into because you really don't you kind of throw yourself on an island and it's great when you get it right because nobody else has access to it but uh, it's also you know more work so we're not there yet uh, but uh, basically as as you probably remember back uh, back eh, what ten years ago now um, you know the whole mass damper concept started to come along and. Uh, and basically, the inerters, uh, what they call the inerters, the, the little spinning masses inside the dampers, uh, to try and, and fight the, the, the stiffness of, of the spring to regain some grip. So running somewhat stiff to control the uh, the platform of the car, having less displacement, and being able to uh, to cancel that stiffness uh, with those little gimmicks uh, to try and, and regain the mechanical grip. So basically, the both of both worlds: platform control and mechanical grip. Uh, we're, we're not allowed to have mass dampers or to have a damper at all as, as the center element for just heat control on an Indy car. Um, you're only having to implement those concepts into the main dampers. So instead of having a regular through shaft or a regular valve or shim damper that we use in IMSA or most other cars, we're allowed to add an inerter system on the primary dampers, front and rear. Uh, so initially, it was kind of like, a, well, man, you know, it's it's great, but it's really meant to work on EVE control, not so much in roll and things like that. So the, there was obviously a lot of time, money, and resources spent uh, to try and understand, optimize, and make it work on the racetrack uh, because of obviously the rules just not allowing really the thing to be used the way it was kind of designed initially. Uh, but it's it's very much what IndyCar's game has turned into, uh, you know, spending a, a huge amount of time and, and money trying to correlate. Uh, so doing a bit of a shaker test before the event, running the event, and then rerunning the event, trying to understand what worked, how it worked, and doing some track replay. Um, so it's uh, it's basically what's happening uh, in IndyCar and and what the the speed difference. Kind of uh, where it comes from for the most part um, because dampers are one of the few things that are pretty open and uh, and make a huge difference wow i'm almost sorry that i asked the question quite honestly because like I said, I mean, uh, if, if you don't like, if you don't want to hear the answer don't ask the question no that's, that's not what i'm about to say it's just so complex <laughs> and yet it plays such a critical role in the performance of the car uh, you know, I've heard drivers say you can't go fast in a slow car. And it seems like the direct correlation goes right back to those dampers. Yeah, I mean, a big part of it, obviously, yeah. you, need, you need the platform, right? You need the right geometries and everything ties together, right? Which is which is why you come from a team, you try and implement something to a new team. You're always missing a detail. And even engineers that come from one team go to another team sometimes just don't understand why their concept that was working on a car just because like something is a tiny bit different. So sometimes it, it is very tricky. Uh, and, and of course, between the geometry and the damping of the car, uh, those are the two things that, you know, you know obviously make, make the car themselves and, and the setup and, and the performance of it. 
Have you learned how to speak Texan yet? <laughs> no, I, I have not. I mean, I've, I've spent fairly little time. I mean, between between Rizzi Competizioni, obviously uh, being based in Texas and and uh, and and joining Foyt, uh, obviously I've uh, I've been in contact and I've been to Texas a few times. But, uh, no, I, I wouldn't uh, venture calling myself uh, that. It's been fascinating to watch the transition over there. And you alluded to the fact that they've split their shops. Uh, one still remains in Waller and then. Uh, they continue to build upon the shop in Speedway, Indiana, just a stone's throw from uh, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It's Larry Foyt, in my humble opinion, has done a wonderful job without sacrificing some of what I call the the pick it up by the bootstraps, common sense approach to racing. Now that you're over there, uh, can you appreciate maybe the the challenges that Larry faced as he tried to transition that team? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a huge uh, balancing act, right? I mean, mm. it, would be, uh, it would be easier if everything was in Indy because Indy car and Indy is just, you know, right? I think back in the day when there were not so many engineers and, and mechanics were, you know, a little easier to find and stuff. Uh, the fact that you were not necessarily in the center of Indy and teams were, you know, maybe a bit more spread out too. So it was easier to get, quality people um, in different places than Indy, uh, but it, it appeared very, you know, strongly uh, to Larry and, and most people involved with the organization that doing it from Texas solely was going to be a massive challenge. Uh, you know, it's tough to get people to just kind of go to Texas, move to Texas, establish to Texas, because if things don't work out, well, yeah. you have nowhere to go. You've got to move. And if you you know, built a family, if you got a house, this and that and the other, well, you're pretty much, you know, dead in the water. So it, it really is the big constraint. And the fact that, you know, the whole month of May, you need some kind of shop anyways to prepare for the 500 and the GP and all of that. So, I mean, you know, Dale does it a little differently. He kind of takes his quarters to the garage in Indy. But, you know, you don't have a machine shop. You don't have anything. If anything goes wrong, you got to make adjustments and things. So Larry surrounded himself with a lot of quality people from Indy. The whole engineering office is in Indy. Scott Horner's done a great job at, at you, know, you know, coming over from, from Ganassi and, and building that group with Larry. And um, it's, it's not easy every day to have, you know, two car built slightly different with the two groups not being uh, in the same shop. But, you know, the most important is that all the engineers are in the same room and, uh, you know, obviously gives, gives you a, a, a shot when, when the craziness starts in, in the month of May. Look, you, you've, you've established yourself as a consistent winner in IndyCar. Uh, you've established yourself as, a, as an absolute first chair when it comes to sports car racing. There are very few that have swept the 12 hours of Sebring, the 24, the Rolex 24, and the 24 hours of Lois. What's left on Sebastian Bourdais's bucket list? Uh, I mean, ever since I've come back to the U.S. in 2012, you know, I've had, I've had that little dream or goal or crazy goal to, to try and, and bring a, a bit of an underdog uh, to, to the front of the, of the scene. Uh, for one reason or another, you know, being money or lack of consistency in the effort or, or things just not being right, um, you know, it just hasn't happened. Uh, and, and I feel like there, there are a lot of elements that are lining up to, to be able to try and do that with, with AJ Foy Racing and trying to be able to, to bring the name back to the forefront of, of the field, uh, which, which it's been synonymous uh, to for a long long time so hopefully we can do that that that's really kind of my goal um try and bring my little stone to to the edifice and 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 build it and and bring it back to to where it belongs but uh obviously you look at the grid and, and you got you know four penskis and you got you know four ganassis and you got a bunch of andretti's or affiliates and uh you know you see rail's very strong and and mclaren's very strong so if you just look at, you know, the number of quality combinations, things are extremely difficult in the current environment that um, history proves in IndyCar. If you got the, a good guy in the car and, and the right people around and just enough money to operate and, and be sensible about it, there are opportunities. So that's my little goal right there. 
you've got a fascinating sponsorship package this year. Uh, I, you know, it, and it was something that Larry worked on for several years. Tell me a little bit about it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, obviously, um, it, it kind of went back and forth when they started, they talk, they talked for a long time, uh, mm-hmm. about with the rocket folks and, uh, and, uh, it, it, it seemed like it was going to happen. Then maybe not, then maybe yes, then maybe not. And then they went back and forth and back and forth. And, and finally, when it happened, you know, I think it, it kind of validates the program a little bit. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a bet in the future and, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's one of those where now we, we got a, a big name sponsor behind it, which obviously doesn't hurt. Um, obviously don't want to dismiss the, the reason why I'm here too. I mean, uh, uh, Marlene at Six and Properties, uh, a good friend of the family made, made all of this possible. Uh, you know, if she had not committed uh, to, or, you know, to the funding of the team, Larry would not have been able to uh, to commit to it with me, and uh, and none of this would have been possible. So, uh, um, thankfully, we're just you know taking financial stress out of out of the whole equation uh, and uh, and making it a bit more sensible. But uh, yeah, it's 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 just a good feel. Like you, you mm. can feel you know some some support is rallying behind and 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 moving the boat in the right direction. And and I'm I'm really happy to see that you know I'm not the only one seeing some potential in it. I appreciate your visiting with us today. Wish you the best of luck and thanks so much for being in the wind tunnel. Anytime, Jack.